Hi, in this lecture, we're going to learn about Kafka Connect, why Kafka Connect, and a bit of its history. So in 2013, there was Kafka 0.8, and it included a bunch of new features such as topic replication, log compaction. It simplified a lot the producer client API. Then came Kafka 0.9 in November 2015. The new simplified high-level consumer API without the new Zookeeper dependency was a new feature. It added security with encryption and authentication. And finally, most importantly for this course, it added the Kafka Connect APIs in its first version. When May 2016 arrived, Kafka 10 was out. And Kafka 10 was out brought Kafka Streams API, but also as part of the 10.1, 10.2 revisions, improved the Connect APIs and brought the single message transforms API. So basically Kafka Connect has been around for over a year and a half now, at this time of recording this video, and it's been continuously improving. This year and a half time really allowed a lot of companies, a lot of programmers to just get on board and develop some nice stuff to that we're gonna use. So why Kafka Connect, why Kafka Streams? Basically, when you have Kafka, you have four common use cases. You have a source and you push it to Kafka and that's the producer API. You have a topic in Kafka and you want to create another topic in Kafka from it. That's the consumer and the producer API. Finally, you have a topic in Kafka and you want to place it in a sync in a target store. That's the consumer API. And then finally, just similarly, you have Kafka and you want it to be consumed by your app. That's also the consumer API. So Kafka Connect, where does it fit? Well, Kafka Connect source API that we're going to see fits on the first case. Kafka Connect source API allows you to easily have a source and put all its data into Kafka. Then Kafka Streams serve the middle purpose to do transformations on Kafka topics. More importantly, Kafka Connect Sync serves the third purpose into getting data out of Kafka wherever you want. And for the last use case, the consumer API is still great, so we keep it this way. So Kafka Connect, what does it do? It helps you simplify and improve getting data in and out of Kafka. And we're going to see there's a lot of connectors for Kafka Connect that allow you to do that. So Kafka Connect solves problems for programmers just like you and I. Basically, we've always wanted to import data from the exact same sources. And I'm going to show you a list right here. Databases, JDBC, Couchbase, Golden Gate, SAP, Blockchain, Cassandra, DynamoDB, FTP, IoT, MongoDB, MQTT, RethinkDB, Salesforce, Solar, SQS, Twitter, and so many more. Basically, the number of technologies that have your source data is pretty much limited. There's not an infinite number of data sources. They're all pretty much you know, the same, or they could get grouped. Also, we always want to store data into the exact same syncs. So S3, Elasticsearch, HTFS for Hadoop cluster or JDBC database, SAP HANA, DocumentDB, Cassandra, DynamoDB, and so on. You see all these different sort of, all diff different syncs. So basically with Kafka, we've seen that it's really tough to achieve fault tolerance exactly once, distribution ordering, and so on, and all these things. And, and some people already wrote these things for you. Other programmers may have done a really good job at writing these sources and these things, producers and consumers. And that's why Kafka Connect. Kafka Connect is basically a set of connectors and all of these I've put on this slide are existing connectors that allow you, for example, to get data from your database straight into Kafka. And then that data from the database into Kafka, we're gonna put it into say Elasticsearch. So, Kafka Connect is really, don't rewrite code that someone already written, use someone else connector and bring your own configuration. And that's what we're going to see. And that's the power of Kafka Connect. I hope you're excited. I'm really excited about showing you how to use a few connectors for this course. And more importantly, I will show you how to use the Twitter source connector, the Elasticsearch sync connector, and the JDBC sync connector.